In the next two videos, we're going to look at how to perform a technique called hit testing. Hit testing is a really useful technique for placing virtual objects onto real world surfaces like floors, tabletops, or even walls. We're going to first learn how to create something called a reticle, which is the circle that you see here. It's just a temporary image that helps us place objects in AR. And after that, we're going to learn how to place virtual objects essentially at the same place where the reticle is. First off, how does hit testing even work? It's pretty cool, actually. The way it works is that um, WebXR, or any AR library really, uh, draws an imaginary line from your device or perhaps even a controller, like a VR controller, from the center of the device, which is usually called the origin, all the way to a surface. And it finds an intersection point between this imaginary line and a surface. Now, this surface could be anything. It could be the floor, it could be a table, it could be the wall. The important point here is that once you perform this technique, you essentially get this hit point, what's called a hit point. And that hit point is going to have information about uh, its 3D position in the world and also its orientation. Uh, in case you hit a wall, the orientation is going to be different, of course, than if you hit the floor. So the first example we're going to see, again, uh, is example number seven, hit testing only reticle. And the reason it's called only reticle is because we're not going to actually place anything on a surface. This example is just going to let us draw this reticle over a surface, all right? And the way to think about this is that we're performing exactly 60 or roughly 60 hit tests every second because we have 60 frames a second. So every single frame, we're going to perform a hit test and update the position of this reticle or this circle. So that's what's going on here. Now let's jump to the code and see how that works. The code we're going to be using for this example is number seven hit testing only radical. I've removed parts of the code that uh, are needed to make this work and we're going to code this together. So the first thing to note is that this example looks pretty much like the other examples we've, we've seen. We have a scene, we have a camera, we have a render, we have a light, um, we have an air button, and we have an animate function and a render function. So that's pretty similar to what we've seen in the, in the past. Right now, this example doesn't do anything. I can load it up, you'll see. It doesn't really do anything. We don't have any, any outputs, so there's nothing here. The first thing you'll see that I added is this line right here. Um, it might not make a lot of sense why we have to add this required featured hit test, but because the WebXR API is still changing, um, we kind of have to pass some of these new features directly into the AR button to tell WebXR that we want to use them. Um, that's, that's pretty much because hit test is one of the new features of the API, so right now we have to explicitly tell WebXR that we want to use that. So just make sure that you add this here, required features hit test. Great, so we have that. The other thing that's different is that, of course, I added a function here um, to add the reticle. Again, a reticle is just a, a circle which is going to act as our visual aid. Um, calling a function here that says add reticle to scene. And if we look at this, it looks very similar to some of the other code we've had in the past where we add other shapes and other meshes to the scene. There's a geometry that happens to be a ring buffer geometry to, to give the circle a, kind of a hole. You know, it kind of looks like a donut in 2D. There is a material, which is just a really basic material that's going to show up as white. And of course, uh, as in the other examples, I can combine these two things. I combine the geometry and the material to form a mesh. And then, of course, I add this mesh to the scene. Now, the two things that are different here, and I just want to call them out real quick, is that um, this reticle uh, has a property called matrix auto update, which is set to false. I'll explain that in a second. And it has a property called visible that is set to false. So this one should make more sense. You know, at the beginning, when we start our application, if we're not pointing to the floor or to a surface, we want to make sure that the reticle is invisible. 
right? And only when we start to hit test and when we hit a surface or we hit a table, that's when we want to show uh, the reticle as visible. So this one should make some kind of intuitive sense as to why we're doing this. Now, this one uh, is, is a bit harder to explain. Basically, 3JS, it recalculates the matrix of a mesh. Remember, the matrix is uh, a property of a mesh that collects information about its position and orientation in space. So 3JS automatically calculates, recalculates the information on a matrix every single frame. But in this case, we are going to update the matrix position and orientation every frame. And because we are going to manually do this, we want to set this property to false. You're going to see um, in a second where we actually edit the code to manually update the matrix of the reticle, uh, meaning the position and the orientation of the reticle, every frame. Okay, so that's basically the setup. We've got our reticle in the scene. The reason why you can't, why you don't see it at all, is because if you notice here, I haven't really, I haven't really said where the reticle is going to be. I haven't really set its position anywhere. 